Okay, welcome to today's video, everyone. Proof that the tangent to the parabola x squared equals 4ay at the point p with coordinates 2ap, ap squared is equally inclined to the y-axis and the focal chord through the point p. Okay, so with this, with in general, with all parametric questions, the trick is really to understand what the question is asking you and to put it into a diagram. And you don't have much time in an exam to waste trying to work it out, so you need to try and develop skills to quickly get these diagrams drawn in a way that's understandable. Okay, so what's this question asking? We need to show that the tangent is equally inclined to the y-axis and to the focal chord. Okay, so this is a diagram that I drew before, and you can see that this is the tangent here. And here we have the focal chord that goes through P. Remember, a focal chord is any chord that passes through the focus. Okay, but this one also needs to pass through P, so this is the only uh, such line. So, what do we need to work out? Well, we need to work out, or we need to show, that this tangent, this blue line here, is equally inclined to the y-axis and to this, this focal chord here. So what we need to show is that this angle here is the same as this angle here. Okay, so that's what it means by equally inclined. Now, how can we do this? Well, there's a couple of ways. We can use the gradients of these lines and use the formula, the two, uh, the gradient of two line formula, which is the tan theta equals the absolute value of, and so on. But we run into a problem when we use the gradient of the y-axis because the gradient is infinite and we can't really work with an infinite gradient. So how are we going to do this? Well, in this, que in this question, the best way to do this is to consider this triangle that's been formed by the focal chord, the tangent, and the y-axis. So if you consider this triangle, and since we're working with a triangle, let's call this point A here. Let's just let it be A. And you should probably write that statement saying, let A be the point on the y-axis where the tangent intersects with the y-axis, but I'm not going to do that in this video. So anyway, let this point be A, and let's consider triangle ASP. Now, if we can show that this is an isosceles triangle, then the base angles will be equal. So now, the problem with this question reduces to trying to show that this is a right-angled triangle. And the way we're going to do that is by showing that these two sides are of equal length. So, let's write down what we need to prove now. So, now we're required to prove that SA equals SP. And if we can do that, this gives us that triangle ASP is isosceles. which means that angle SAP is equal to angle APS. Okay, so that was part of, that's where part of the marks come in, recognizing where or what you need to do and how to do it. Now, you're not going to get marks for this line, but you won't get the marks if you don't get this line in your head. Okay, so how are we going to start off by doing that? Well, we know that the focus has coordinates 0, a, and we're given the coordinates of p. So, let's just use the distance formula to find the distance of sp. Okay, so, sp is going to be 2ap minus 0 squared plus ap squared minus a squared, and then we take the square root of that. Okay, now I'll probably go through this quicker because I'm sure you all know how to do a distance formula. This is going to be a squared p to the 4 minus 2a squared p squared plus a squared. We're taking the square root. Okay, now we can simplify this and we're going to get a squared p to the 4 plus 2a squared p squared plus a squared 
and the square root. Now we can factor out an a squared here. And we get this. And there's two things that you should notice here. First of all, we can take out this a squared, and it just becomes an a outside of the square root sign. So this here is just an a. And under here we have a perfect square, This in this uh, bracket here. So we're going to have p squared plus 1, all squared. So this is a perfect square. And this is nice because now this square and the square root will cancel, and we're left with the distance being a into p squared plus 1. Okay, and so we can say therefore sp equals this and should write units because we're dealing with the distance. Now, we've worked out what the distance of sp is. Now we need to work out the distance of uh, sa. And to do that, we're going to first need to find the coordinates of a. So, let's work out how we're going to find the coordinates of a. Well, a is the point where the tangent intersects the y-axis, so we're going to need the equation of a tangent. Now, since the equation of the tangent wasn't given to us, we can't quote it directly, so we're going to have to derive it, which isn't too bad. So, the equation of the curve was x squared equals 4ay, and let's rearrange for y and get x squared over 4a. some paper. Okay, so now we need to get the derivative so we can get the gradient of our tangent. So we're going to have dy and dx. That's going to be, well, let's see, x over 2a. And at the point p, which is 2ap, ap squared, what do we get? We get dy on dx that's going to be equal to 2ap, subbing in the x-coordinate, over 2a, which is simply p. Okay, so this is going to be the gradient of our tangent. So we might say, therefore, the gradient of the tangent is going to be equal to p. Okay, so now let's use the point gradient formula to get the equation of our tangent. So therefore, the equation of the tangent at p. What's that going to be? Well, it's going to be y minus y1, which is ap squared, equals to m, which is p, into x minus our x-coordinate, which is 2ap. Okay? We can simplify this. and get that y is equal to px, and we'll bring this over, this will, get, will give us minus ap squared. Okay, now, what's a? Let's get the diagram back. a is, it lies on the y-axis. So a, we definitely know that a is going to have 0, comma, some y value. Let's call it maybe y sub naught. Okay, so since it's on the y-axis, its x-coordinate is definitely 0, but we need to work out what the y-coordinate is. So, how are we going to do that? Well, we can substitute the y-coordinate in to the equation of the tangent, since it lies on the tangent. So we sub in the x-coordinate of x equals 0. Okay, so let's do that. So we might say at a, we have x equal to 0. And so we sub that in, we're going to get y equals p into times 0 minus ap squared. And so it's negative ap squared. Alright, so therefore a has these coordinates, 0 comma negative ap squared. Alright, now let's have a look at the diagram again. We've just shown that this, which was y naught, well this is now negative ap squared. So what does that mean? That means that this distance here is ap squared units. So this distance here 
is the distance of AP squared units. And this distance here is the distance of A units. So, the length of this line here, SA, this side of the triangle, is going to be this little part in here plus this larger part here. So, we can then say, therefore, our distance of SA, well, since it's the origin here, we can say that it's equal to OS plus OA, which is equal to OS was A units, and OA was AP squared units. So what we're doing is we're just getting these two distances here and adding them. But here we can factor out the A, and we get 1 plus P squared, which is the same distance, units, which is the same distance as the distance of SP. So we can say this is equal to SP. Right, so therefore SA is equal to SP. And then we can say therefore ASP, maybe triangle, ASP is isosceles. Therefore base angles are equal. And therefore Angle SAP is equal to angle APS. Okay, and we've shown what we need to do. Okay, so the trick here was obviously to understand the question, understand the wording of the question, and then trying to get it into a diagram. Once you've got it into a diagram, you need to look at the best and most efficient way to go about solving your question. Okay, thanks for watching.